Step one in making a cake is wash your hands because no one wants to eat your cake if they have gotten sick from something that you made before. So, soap, water. It's not just during times of pandemics when we wash our hands. Always a good thing to do. The first cake that we're going to be making is a chocolate cake, and I'm going to read the instructions for you just in case you can't see it very well from there. It's always important to read the instructions before you actually start mixing things together. It's definitely one of my weaknesses is that I will just start throwing things in a bowl and then I get halfway through the recipe and realize that I put something in and messed it up because I should have put it in later. So we'll read the instruction first and then we'll start to measure things and mix them together. So. The steps of this recipe, the first thing that we're supposed to do is to combine the following. One and two third cups of wheat flour, a third of a cup of cocoa, one tablespoon of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, and three quarters of a cup of sugar. Then, after we have mixed those things together, we mix in the following. One cup of water, five tablespoons of cooking oil, one teaspoon of vanilla. Once it's all mixed together, you pour the mixture into a small saucepan and bake it in a bigger saucepan, which has some water and is covered, and I'll show you how that looks as we get to it. Do that for 40 minutes or until a toothpick stuck in the middle comes out clean. I'll also show you how that looks as we go about the baking, and then your cake is done. You might have noticed that when the word tablespoon is written, it uses a capital T, and when teaspoon is written, it uses a lowercase t. This isn't all the time, but a lot of the time, and it helps us to remember that the spoon that's bigger, the tablespoon, is the one with the capital T. The spoon that's smaller, the one with the lowercase t, is a teaspoon. So if you're ever in doubt, and one is capitalized and one is not, the tablespoon is the bigger one with the bigger t, teaspoon is a smaller one with a smaller T. So let's go ahead and get started with our measurements. The first thing, if you remember, was the wheat flour, and we need one and two-thirds of a cup. So first we'll fill the, the cup up to the line of one, and then once we've poured it out, we'll fill it up to the line of two-thirds, and that will be our wheat flour. The best way to measure it is by scooping it into the cup with a spoon. Once you think that you've got it about right, it's good to shake the cup a bit to make sure that the flour is level inside. So you can see, maybe, it's flat and it's at the level of our one cup line. You don't want to pound it on the table because that will pack the flour in there and you'll end up with extra flour than what you're supposed to have. So it was at the one line before I pounded it on the table. There is one, and now we do two-thirds. So my two-thirds line is there, and that's the right amount, so I can add that to the bowl. Next, I need one-third of a cup of cocoa, so a third is down here near the bottom of the cup. Again, I'm going to spoon it into the cup. So it's a little bit hard to see through these nice cups because they're a bit dark. 
Um, but if you can hold them up to the light, you can see through from the inside to where your line is. So the way that I'm looking, the light is behind the camera, and so I can see through there to see that it's up to my line of one third. All right. Next, I need to add my baking powder, which is supposed to be one tablespoon. And when you measure one tablespoon, you want it to be flat and level with the edge of the spoon. Um, if you have a heap of baking powder, uh, like this, then it's going to be hard to see whether yours is the same as someone else's. And so we want it to be level. Uh, we can use another spoon or our finger to do that. So I'm going to use this other spoon to make it flat. So now if you can see, it's level with the edge of the spoon. So I can add that one. The same thing is true when we measure the salt using the teaspoon, but we want only half a teaspoon. So I'm going to make a level teaspoon. So there's one teaspoon, but I want to only have half, so I'm going to remove half of the salt. And the half that's remaining, I can put into my cake. Then I need three quarters of a cup of sugar. Here's the sugar. I'm going to scoop it into my cup up to the level of three quarters. Or I can pour it either way. It will work. I know it's a lot of sugar, but cakes are meant to be dessert. They're not meant to be healthy. Alright, looks about right. Three quarters of a cup. So, those are the first five ingredients. I'm going to mix them together and then I'll add the water, cooking oil, and vanilla. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to mix them together again once we've added the other things, but generally you want the things to be mixed together because you don't want a big bite of baking powder as you eat your cake. So, we need one cup of water. Okay, there is my one cup. Then we need five tablespoons of cooking oil. You have to be careful with the cooking oil because it has to be level with the spoon. You don't want to be overflowing it. So I'm going to pour it over the cup just to make sure that I don't overflow the spoon. Do it like this so that you can see what I'm doing. See there, it overflowed a little bit. So there's one tablespoon. There's my second one. Okay, there's my five tablespoons of cooking oil. The last thing is one teaspoon of vanilla. And the vanilla is the same thing as the cooking oil. We want it to be one level spoonful. And 
One teaspoon is not a lot, but these flavors are very strong, and so you only need a little bit to give the flavor. So there's our one teaspoon. Pour it in there. Close this so I don't spill it. Okay, so now I mix everything together. And I don't need to beat it for a really long time, I just need to make sure that there are no chunks of dry flour or baking powder that are there. Just make sure that everything is mixed together with the liquid ingredients. Okay, so now you can see how it is. It's all mixed together, nice and soupy. We can pour it into our cake-sized saucepan now. It's always helpful to put a little bit of cooking oil or cooking fat or blue band inside the saucepan before you put in the cake so that it doesn't stick. So I'm just going to use a little bit of this cooking oil that fell into my cup. You don't need a lot, just a little bit. And then wipe it around inside there. All of the bottom and the sides. Then we're in my cake. So as not to bore you, I'll come back in just a minute after I've scraped out the rest of the bowl. Okay, I am back. The bowl has been nicely scraped out. All of our cake is now inside of this smaller saucepan. And I have water boiling in the saucepan that is on the gas cooker. So it's a bit hard to see, but I've put maybe An inch and a half, so like three or four centimeters of water in there. And it's enough so that when I put this saucepan inside, it will float, but not come out over the top of the bigger saucepan. So I'm going to carefully drop it in there so it's floating. Put the cover on there. And I have to wait for 40 minutes to see how, whether the cake is ready or not and I need to start timing the 40 minutes when the water is boiling. So my water was boiling right away, so I can start timing now. So it is 3.20, so right at 4 o'clock I can come and check and see if it's done. If your water is not boiling, you need to wait until it starts boiling and then you can start timing your 40 minutes. Because water boils at 100 degrees, your cake is not going to burn because it's not going to get any hotter than 100 degrees. The only problem comes if all of the water gets boiled off out of your saucepan and now your saucepan is just sitting directly on the heat source. Then your cake is going to burn. But as long as there's some water inside there, it's going to be okay. So you need to make sure that there is enough water, but not too much. If you have so much water that you set your cake in there and the level of the water is almost level with the top of your small saucepan, then once it's boiling, it can go into your cake and ruin your cake. So make sure that you have enough so that the small saucepan floats, but not so much that water will go over the top while it's boiling. So I will be back at 4 o'clock and we will check the cake to see if it's ready. It is now 4 o'clock and so our cake is hopefully ready. I want to point out one important tip as you check your cake and that is to remove the cover of the saucepan off to the side, like this. If you lift it up like this, you can imagine the condensation that's on the cover will drip into the saucepan and get on your cake and then you'll have a wet cake. There will be a little bit of water on it from the steam, but 
once you take it out and let it cool, it will dry off. Um, you just have to be careful so that you don't pour water in the cake when you're taking off the cover. So I'm going to move the camera over here so that you can see more closely what's happening as we open it up and check it with a toothpick. Okay, so we're going to lift off the cover. And there, our cake has risen very nicely. So we want to take a toothpick and stick it directly straight down into the middle of the cake. And then pull it straight out. And you can see, maybe you can see, there are tiny little crumbs of cake on there. And it doesn't look runny like it did when we poured it into the saucepan. So this means that our cake is ready and we can take it off. So we're going to turn off the heat and take it out of here. It's hot, so be careful. And there is the finished cake. So we're going to let it cool for a few minutes and then we'll try to take it out of the saucepan. So I'll be back in just a little bit. Now is the moment of truth where we see if we can get our cake successfully out of this saucepan without sticking. Sometimes it can help if you take a knife and run it around the edge of the cake like this. And you can shake it, tap it a bit against the table. And you'll be able to feel once it starts coming a bit loose. Hear that? Okay, then we put a plate on the top of the saucepan, flip it over, tap it a few times, hopefully it comes out like that. So now we have our beautiful cake. Um, if you want to have this side be the bottom, then you would get another plate, put it here, and then turn it over onto that other plate. And you can use a long knife to cut the cake flat so that that top part is smooth. And then you can put icing, but icing is a matter for another lesson, so we'll do that another time. All right, let me just demonstrate how we can flip the cake over so that it's facing up the right way. Put another plate on top, turn it over, and then it's facing up the way that it came out of the saucepan. And we also have to taste it because we need to know if it's any good. And yes, it is. So I hope that you also made yours at home and are tasting the same thing that I am. See you next time.